Ok now that we've altered app.hpp um, it's time to add a new file if we add a new C++ file I'm going to call it app.cpp um, <coughs> and this is where we're going to implement our um, our class our C app um, just give it a name there Right, the first thing obviously that we want to do is include app.hpp um, to get access to those prototypes there. Um, and then next, we're going to define a data structure to hold information about our vertex, uh, our vertices, or a vertex in particular. Um, uh, if you remember what I said before, we're going to do a coloured triangle, so it's also going to have to hold colour information and this is the uh, data structure I'm going to use a struct here and it's going to uh, it hold the information about a single vertex and it's called vertex um, it's going to hold our x coordinate our y coordinate and our z coordinate um, and then we're going to have this fun little thing here RHW and this signifies that we are in screen space so basically if we give the x coordinate a value of 100 it means 100 pixels to the uh, right basically because um, in screen space we like to start from the top left hand corner of our screen so positive x direction is that way 100 pixels if you have a, yeah, say this window here was uh, 200 pixels wide 100 pixels on the X would mean we're going to be on this line here halfway across Y we're going to go 0 is going to be in the top left again and positive is going to be down down the screen like that so 100 100 if this was a 200 by 200 pixel window would be 100 across in the X and 100 down in the Y so it will be the centre of our screen Z um, we're not going to worry about it at this stage because we're not quite into 3D yet so the Z coordinate we'll just, we'll just uh, store as 0 we're not into depth at the moment uh, Z would usually be going into the screen and out of the screen uh, yeah. so this RHW is just going to signify that we're working in screen space like that and the unit essentially is a pixel and we're going to have a double word value called colour which is yeah, you guessed it gonna hold the colour of our vertex right and the next thing before we get into our class good and proper is just a definition here I'm gonna call it my FVF F stands for flexible vertex format and uh, basically it's going to be uh, definition here that is going to store the format of this structure. I read the comment if you get the code. Um, basically, it's made up of two components: D3D FEF X Y Z R H W. Notice how that matches that X Y Z R H W. And D3D FEF Diffuse. Diffuse is basically matte color. It just means color um, for the purpose of this tutorial and this is here so we've got that followed by that and in our structure we've got that followed by that so basically it's got to match the value of our struct and this basically is just going to tell our graphics card and direct 3d uh, the the format of this data so that's why that's there we're going to need to use it later on in our code right now we're going to begin to implement the methods in our class first one being uh, initialize All right. the first thing that we need to do or the first thing I'm choosing to do in this is really uh, define uh, the positions of the three vertices that make up a triangle I'll make up this triangle in particular uh, I'm working on a 200 by 200 window 200 pixels by 200 um, so I'm just going to create three, vert uh, three instances, instances of the vertex struct um, by filling out this comma separated uh, list here 
Um, I'm going to have x 100 pixels, y 25, uh, 0. The 1 signifies that we're going to be working in screen space. Uh, I'm using the uh, D3D color XRGB RGB macro again, which quantifies colors RGB from 0 to 255. So this here represents the color blue in direct 3D, oh, sorry, the color red in direct 3D. Um, so we've got a vertex uh, 100 across in the X, which is in the middle of the screen, uh, 25 down, which is about here somewhere. Um, Z we're not worrying about. Uh, it's going to be in screen position, uh, screen space coordinates. So we know it's definitely this, uh, and then it's going to be the color red. This this vertex. Uh, similar for this vertex here, the second vertex. Uh, it's going to be 175 across, so it's going to be right over here, and 175 down, so it's going to be right over here. And you can see that how how we're uh, starting to form the triangle, because the last vertex is going to be in this position of the screen here. Um, yep. And then obviously we're going to have three separate colours for each vertex, red, green and blue respectively. Okay, so that's, that's what we're going to do there. Uh, the next call that we're going to make is we're going to create the vertex buffer that we declared as an instance variable in our class in the header file. And we're going to create it with the, uh, uh, the device colon colon arrow uh, create vertex buffer method create vertex buffer, me buffer method of the D3D device um, and this just said here creates the vertex buffer that we will use to start our vertex info um, the first parameter here is going to be the size of the vertex buffer um, in bytes I believe so it's just th because we're holding uh, oops, because we're holding uh, three vertices in our triangle it's going to be three times the size of the vertex because three is the number of vertices and the size of vertex in bytes. That's going to be the size of uh, the buffer. Uh, this is a usage hint that we can, if we want to, tell Direct3D how we're going to use this vertex buffer so it can perform some optimizations behind the scenes. Uh, we probably won't go into that now because it's, it's a bit of an advanced topic, so we just set that to null. We need to tell Direct3D what format we want this vertex buffer, and we can do that using our definition that we uh, defined above, saying the format of this vertex is going to be position RHW followed by color, and that's that. Uh, we need to tell Direct3D what kind of memory we want to store this uh, these vert this vertex buffer as, and we're just going to use the default pool of memory, and then we need to link the vertex buffer with a pointer we need to give it a reference uh, so we can work with it and uh, this, this parameter essentially hooks up uh, the vertex buffer with our pointer and uh, this one is uh, an advanced topic again we can share uh, uh, processes and stuff in Direct3D it's, it's pretty advanced and I won't go into it but it can be used for optimizations and stuff uh, later on if you want to do that and then yeah we if this failed, then we're just going to pop up our error message box saying we couldn't fail it, uh, and return something called e fail, which is basically um, will throw the failed back into the caller of this meth method. So basically, it means we'll be able to detect, detect whether it works with this failed macro if we throw return our e fail there. Assuming it didn't fail, uh, the next thing we need to do is begin to populate our vertex buffer with, with the vertices that we defined earlier. Uh, 